tracery. We've all seen it in the window architecture of Gothic style churches. Here's another example where you can see how the carved stone ribs interlace and intertwine. These patterns have fascinated me for quite a while now and I wondered if it would be possible to reproduce them in quilling. These are the three basic classic shapes that occur in architectural tracery. The trefoil, the quatrefoil and pointed quatrefoil. I've discovered that you can reproduce these shapes by cutting sections out of quilled ring coils to create gently curving arcs. These arcs can be used to create many interesting quilled outlines and I've used them in all sorts of different designs, as you can see here. To create quill tracery you first need to make some ring coils using quilling strips. I like to make them in various sizes by using a collection of dowels, all of which have different diameters. Normally, if I'm making a ring coil by winding a strip around a dowel, I would minimise my use of glue. I would just start by putting a dot of glue at one end of the strip, then begin winding. And then I would secure the ring at the other end by putting another little spot of glue, seal that down, gently ease the paper off the dowel and there you have a ring coil. But the trouble is when you're making tracery you're going to have to cut sections out of that ring. And when you've only glued it with two spots of glue at either end, look what happens. The whole thing falls apart. So to overcome this problem, you're going to have to make ring coils which are glued all the way round as you wind. So I start off in the same way. But this time I'm going to be applying glue all the way around. And you'll actually find when you do it this way that the um, rings are very much easier to tease off the dowel, which is a bonus. But just make sure that every area of the inner surface is covered with a line of glue. There we go, so it's easy to take off another ring. Now here's one that I glued earlier the glue is dry on this, so you can see now that if I snip a section out, no problem. Everything's holding together, which is what I need for my tracery. In order to create tracery patterns, a batch of ring coils must be created which have had sections of equal size cut out of them. So when forming ring coils around a dowel, it's quite helpful to make marks on the dowel where the cuts are to be made so that the size of the cutaway section is exactly the same for each ring. Another thing worth remembering is that the longer the strip you use when making your ring coil, the thicker your tracery pieces will be. So here's how I take a batch of rings and cut them into equal size arcs. Can you see on my dowel I've put two little marks there. They're the points at which I want to make my cuts. So here I've got a batch of ring coils that I made earlier where the glue is dry. So all I do is thread the ring back onto the dowel 
and then what I do is just use my thumbnail to make little marks opposite the lines so that I can easily see them. Then slide them off the dowel again and I can just cut along those marks. And there I have another one. Now, when you're making your ring coils, it's a good idea to try and make sure that the strip starts and ends at the same position on the dowel. And the reason for this is that, just for the sake of neatness, when you slide the ring onto the dowel, try and position the join in between the two cut marks. So there's one mark, there's the other mark, there is the join. So that way you know that the joining section is going to be discarded after you've made your cut. So again I've made the two little marks with my thumbnail. Cut. And cut. And then the bit with the join in is the bit that falls away. The size of the arcs you create will be dictated by the circumference of your ring coil and the proportion of it that's cut away. So you might want to experiment with different sizes of dowel marked in different positions. The key thing to remember is that the cutaway section needs to be a third or less of the ring's total circumference. This creates arcs which resemble small horseshoes. OK, so now you've got a batch of equal sized horseshoe arcs and you can begin gluing them together to form a tracery pattern. So I would start by putting a tiny dot of glue just on the tip of the first arc and then I can gently butt that up to the tip of the second arc and push them together. Now this joint does need to be quite strong so you definitely need to allow the glue to dry. I would recommend perhaps you hold them together using a pair of self-locking tweezers then you can happily leave them to dry for several minutes or you could equally secure them using pins on a quilling board. Once that's done I can add a second horseshoe arc in exactly the same way and you can already see that uh, a trefoil pattern is starting to form. So I could now glue the remaining two tips of those together to make a finished trefoil or alternatively I could insert a fourth horseshoe and form a quatrefoil like that. So I've completed the quatrefoil and now I could if I wanted to just gently squeeze the top of each arc to create a pointed quatrefoil. Now, just backtracking a little bit, when you're creating your arcs for tracery, don't be tempted to cut your rings in half. If you do, you end up with semicircles rather than horseshoes and all your arcs will line up horizontally like this when you glue the cut tips together. So for curved tracery formations, the cutaway section always needs to be one third or less. So once you've mastered making the basic formations, you can start getting a bit more adventurous, perhaps by enclosing one pattern within another, combining sections of tracery together and bordering your tracery within the outline of a much larger arc. Tracery patterns make lovely outlines for enclosing other types of quilling. 
Don't be afraid to mix and match your tracery patterns and even to cut pieces out of them if necessary. The blue sections of this fish are obviously two complete trefoils, but the head and tail sections have each been made by cutting a quatrefoil in half down the middle and enclosing it within a larger arc. You can even experiment by gluing pairs of large and small horseshoes together at their tips, as I've done in this design. I've also pinched the top of the arcs to create this mandala effect. So there you have it, quilled tracery. You can certainly use it to complement other quilling techniques. And I would encourage you just to start making horseshoe shaped arcs using different sized dowels and see where it leads you. You just never know what you'll end up creating.